Okay, okay, okay. Y'all ready for this? Nope. Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm editor in chief of the Amped blog. I'm here with Kyle and Jay. And today we are going to be talking about the differences between uh, digital formats and vinyl. Kyle recently wrote an article on the Amped blog about vinyl myths, some things that sort of like misconceptions about the format, and that paired with like the Pono video where we talk a little bit about vinyl and digital. It really sparked people's interest, and we wanted to talk more about it and clarify some things and help you understand a little more about the differences. So. I guess what we should go into is what we listen to, what our preferences are as far as what we listen to. Do we prefer digital or vinyl or what? Well, I, I listen to both. Um, whenever I buy an album, I, uh, whether I buy it on CD or vinyl depends on a lot of factors. Most important one for me is like artist intent. What, did, what does the artist want me to listen to this music on, you know? I'm mostly digital. I mean, vinyl is an occasion for me, but... If I wanted to enjoy it as much as I do digital, it would just require investment in different hardware. So while I do like it and I want it to stick around, I'm mostly digital. I mean, we have a multitude of sonic artifacts with vinyl that I guess you don't really see with with digital formats. You don't see those artifacts. Unless you mess them up. True. You can see other artifacts. Like digital has its own artifacts. Yeah, they do. You don't see that. They definitely, they all have their, their own individual artifacts. Mm -hmm. And as far as digital goes... When you get into higher quality files and higher sampling rates and higher bit rates, you're not really going to see much in the way of artifacts unless somebody deliberately like messes something else, like unless they, they accidentally clip the audio or if they alias because they set the sampling rate and everything and the bit rate incorrectly. So, I mean, you have to look at those kind of things. I feel like with digital, it has to be more of, um, it has to be more of a mistake that causes the artifact rather than an intrinsic thing or like a or like a depending on the kind of like encoding kind of quality thing i would say so the biggest difference would be vinyl and really all the analog mediums we have like tape will naturally favor harmonic distortion now which is more pleasing to our ears as digital would be more inharmonic di distortion and that's just artifacts that relate to the fundamental of what you actually want to, to record the distortion is there because it's stuff that you didn't want but ends up there anyway yeah i actually i actually want to talk about that a little bit because a lot of people talk about like the cold digital sound versus the warm vinyl sound you know so i mean i think a lot of that warmth is coming from those artifacts mainly the harmonic distortion in vinyl a lot of that is also the um depends on what turntable you're using and what speakers you're using. Like the thing with vinyl, it's very dependent on like the type of equipment you use. Like a CD will f sound like a CD no matter what you play it on. But like I have a turntable and when I, I've been playing vinyl on that for years and I always thought, you know, vinyl's cool, but why do people think it sounds warmer? If anything, it sounds harsher. Then it turns out I played something on my dad's turntable and it sounded way better. Like, like all the bass that I thought was missing was there all of a sudden. So a lot of times when people say vinyl sounds better, what it really is, they just have more expensive vinyl equipment than CD equipment. The, that is why digital has kind of taken over how we listen to music so, so quickly is because it's much easier to get a high quality digital sound with a lot less investment and a lot less previous knowledge than it is for vinyl. Vinyl, you need to make sure you have a lot of things right. And if you get all those things right in a row, then it can sound great. With a CD, that seems to be taken care of for you by the companies that actually sell you the equipment. And there's like a threshold with, with digital. All of them affect the sound differently, but you don't need to know about your turntable or your cables or your cartridge head or how your speakers are, are set up or the EQ as much. It's more of just put in. Other companies have taken care of that for you and then you just get music out of any speaker. It's like digital is almost more robust for people that don't have the proper knowledge of how to make it sound good. Like when you put it on like a, an old record, like it'll sound all, all like scratchy and stuff, but you know, for some people that it's like, oh, it brings back all those memories of all those times I used to listen to this album in my basement with my friends. You know, that's fine. Widens mm. the grooves. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's almost a reason that I don't listen to as much vinyl as I do because the vinyl that I have, I don't want to wear out. Mm. It's like, it's never something I would just put on in the background. I always need to make sure that I'm going to have a really active listening experience with it because yeah. I want to savor the vinyl when it's new, at least new to me. And the other thing about vinyl is that Kyle mentioned that they have to cut everything above 15K in vinyl. Yeah. Like basically 15 kilohertz uh, and an equalizer. There's a lot of websites that'll show you like this like frequency response chart of like the vinyl and it shows like all this information above 20K that it's debatable whether or not you'd hear that anyway. But the fact of the matter is a lot of that information that like the computer picks up is actually just high frequency distortion. When when they master vinyl, they have to cut everything above 15 kilohertz because anything above 15 kilohertz could potentially damage the the equipment they use to cut the vinyl. And like in some cases, it can smoke or set the cutting lathe on fire. So this fucking metal. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people will say it's like, oh, like the only way to listen to like digital music and have it be as good as vinyl is to listen to like 96 kilohertz flak files or 192. The fact of the matter is like vinyl doesn't have that much information above 15K. And, you know, most people don't notice it because there isn't that much music going on up there anyway. So there actually are, I think some, like I believe there's like that hidden groove in uh, Sergeant Pepper's at the end where it has like the high frequency noise that only dogs can hear. Since vinyl, since it's been on the decline for so long, we just felt like we don't have to make it better because no one's going to like it anymore. And then mm -hmm. after like the 2000s, you know, and, like all like the hipster scene and the DJ scene got more popular. Um, then I guess, you know, vinyl became more, maybe, maybe that will force people, it will push the technology forward and people will go, oh, I guess these people do care about their vinyl. And they care about good sounding music and they, and we must, you know, we must catch up to them to kind of, to give them that experience that they want so badly. Yeah, that I'm actually not sure if, if it's going to progress because one of the reasons vinyl is coming back is because it's a nostalgia thing for... That's true. It is a novelty. A of, yeah, people. it's a bit of a novelty. And like with the vinyl itself, it could be a dead end because vinyl has a lot of problems. I mean, it's kind of amazing when you look at all of the things that vinyl does poorly to think that it can store music as well as it does. Yeah. So like if it's going to go forward, maybe we just need to approach it from a different angle. I mean, Jack White just did like his his ultra LP from uh, for Lazaretto, his new album. And it's got like all this crazy stuff on it. It's got like the, like, the, the holograms and like all the, you know, the, you know, the it, sometimes the first side like plays from in the inner grooves to the outer grooves. And like you got like the lock groove on the outside or something. And like, like there's like things hidden underneath the vinyl. So guys like that who are like really, I guess, scholars of the form would really be into that and they go like hell yeah i'm gonna <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna yeah. get in there and roll my sleeves up and make vinyl really good but like yeah there's already you know. like kind of it's already kind of starting to happen i forget the name of the uh mastering engineer he was talking to but he uh was a mastering engineer who specialized in vinyl and he was saying that to get the best results when cutting vinyl they uh, t they typically cut at 45 uh rpm as opposed to the typical 33 and a third for a 12 inch LP and they try to keep the size really short and you you notice like with new vinyl releases like records that would have been pressed to like a single disc 33 rpm uh, vinyl nowadays you see a lot more like like two disc vinyl albums coming out with really short sides and in some cases uh, it's 45 rpm uh, which is a better practice I guess what Kyle just said brings us to the process of recording these things and how important that is to the form and how there's a difference between recording or mastering for vinyl as opposed to recording or mastering for digital formats and how some people are coping with doing both since you know the big resurgence in vinyl sales like like how how does the how does the recording process affect something that's going to be released on both vinyl and digital what do you have to do to make those make it compatible with both CDs definitely have a much uh, higher dynamic range, which is contrary to what a lot of people think. There's a great movement of audiophiles who are um, anti-loudness war. And while it's true that there are certain things you have to pay attention to with vinyl, you can, you can get away with certain things on CD that you can't on vinyl. 
but that doesn't necessarily mean that all all vinyl records have more dynamic range than CDs. You can still like take a digital file and put a look ahead brick wall limiter on it and like smash it until it's Rick Rubin loud <laughs> and and just cut that digital file to a vinyl record and it won't sound great but they still do it, you know. There is uh, one record that I know for sure was mastered differently is Ecky Thump, the White Stripes album. There's two different masters done by two different people and the, uh, from what I hear the vinyl one is much more dynamic than the CD. That doesn't mean that it's capable of more dynamics. The CDs are actually capable of much more dynamic, which is why they're actually favorable for things like classical music. Yeah, it's like you need to start two different mixes from scratch. So you need to start one mix with the mentality that this is going to be digital and start another one completely separate just from the raw tracks that says, okay, this is going to be for on vinyl. Like, what do I have to do, do differently? And they're kind of like a guiding philosophy, kind of like a fork that goes to different roads. What exactly are we looking at here in terms of difference of sound? Like, is it, is it going to really affect? Because you have people who go like, I'm not going to buy the new vinyl because the new vinyl is all digitally mastered and digitally, you know, it's all they they ported all the stuff into into Pro Tools and it, it sounds like poop. And I don't like digital because it's cold and gross and I want my vinyl to sound that way. I want my vinyl to be warm and fuzzy like the 60s. I'm sure I've heard a couple analog vinyl records in my time. They've been very few, probably haven't been on the speakers that could actually do it justice. So I don't think that there's a lot of a difference and I feel like it's people that are focusing on the wrong things. Because mm. um, I was actually researching this last night. I just tried to find a completely analog mastering house in LA. <laughs> um, doesn't exist. I'm sure that there are still studios, places like Henson, where you have, they have tape machines that you can track to tape. But in LA, I don't think there's a mastering house. You could take your two inch tape to and have it stay all in the analog realm. Like they all have digital at some point. There's there's a lot of people who will say, well, like which one is real? Like whatever that means. I guess it's basically like if you want real sound, go to a live show. Exactly. And and go to a live show where they don't have a PA and they are True. just singing live. And it's and not going through a digital sound console of which almost all live consoles yeah, are now. Go, at least all the new ones. So go watch street performers if you want <laughs> if you want real sound. Sound waves reaching the microphone are changed into impulses of electric current. Increased in strength by the amplifier, they flow to the cutting head, moving it back and forth and cutting from side to side in the groove of the record. To play it back, we substitute a stylus for the cutting head. The tip of the stylus swerves back and forth, side to side in the groove, bending the ceramic bar to which the stylus is attached. When a ceramic bar is bent, tiny impulses of electric current are produced. These impulses of current, again strengthened by an amplifier, are carried to the speaker, where they are converted back into sound, the same sound we had at first. Their defining char characteristics are no matter how small your time scale with analog, you can find a different voltage at a different time scale. Digital has specific voltages at specific time intervals. When you get b below that, the voltage doesn't really change. In analog, it would change a little bit. The reason all those sound engineers, mixers, masters have jobs is because you can't just put a microphone in front of something, put it onto a storage medium, play it back, and expect it to sound good. There needs to be a lot of massaging, and there needs to be a lot of catering to the medium to actually get something at the other end that you would want to listen to. By mixing and doing all the stuff we do, you're trying to get the sound back to its more original state in the first place. Yeah. That's what all those knobs are in the pictures of studio that you see. <laughs> all the knobs and faders and buttons. At the end of the day, it's it it's the like people on the other end of the medium yeah. who like put music into the medium for it to come back out at you. Yeah. And then to I think tools like instruments and outboard gear and, and all that stuff comes comes after that and then everything yeah. and, and microphones. Yeah. Oh, back when we were talking about the the whole idea of maybe vinyl technology will be pushed forward uh, in the way digital has. We know well, I mean we know that digital technology has really been pushed forward in this sort of feedback loop. 
because people want higher and higher resolution files, as we can see with all these new high res players coming out. Uh, so you're getting these, you know, big bit rate, big sampling rate, you know, 96, 192, you know, huge kind of files coming up, but they're big, they're big. And they're, because if they're, if you want them to be lossless and you don't want them to be um, encoded down to like an MP3, they're going to be big files. So that's why we make bigger players. So the whole thing, I think with making these higher res files, that's good for the case of digital is that they are pushing the technology forward and forcing us to come up with these bigger memory units, bigger hard drives, you know, more powerful computers and things. And it just keeps doing that because we just, they keep intensifying and that's forcing, you know, the rest of the technology, the playback technology to go along with it and get bigger and stronger. Even MP3s, which are still lossy, like now they have like 256, 320 kilobits per second. Uh, which, you know, is still losing something, but I think the consumer can't tell the difference between that and the WAV files, you know? Yeah. That's true. I think a big point of that is kind of time because I noticed that like if you listen to something on vinyl, I'm talking about like a old vinyl, or if, if you listen to CDs, like high quality files, it sounds really good. You can listen to it for hours and you feel refreshed afterwards. I find that if I listen to lossy files like mp3s aacs especially back in the early 2000s when everything was really small after a couple hours i'd feel tired like my my ears would hurt i couldn't really think so i feel that when you're when you have more of that info your your mind's filling in less and so for longer listening sessions it can make a really big difference yeah i i think the listening experience is a very important part of both formats i mean you have a portability with digital, but that doesn't necessarily put your focus on the music as much. It, not, it, doesn't, it doesn't force you to. Because when you put on a vinyl, you're pretty much forced to sit down and listen to the album unless you want to get up and switch the needle to every song that you like and flip it over. I think even uh, like CDs, like that's more of an active listening experience than listening to those same wave files just in iTunes or something, at least for me. What I value more than like sound quality actually is having an actual physical format. When you actually buy something, whether it's a CD or a vinyl or like even like something that's not really practical, like a cassette or a DVD audio or something, and you get something that you can hold in your hand and you actually have to put in to something to listen to, like that makes you appreciate the music more, which uh, I think is partially why vinyl is starting to make a comeback. When you first listen to it, it's like something hypnotic, even like about like watching the thing spin like a lot of people like that with a computer it's, it's all all visual you just double click and, and it plays there's like there's some of the magic gone if, if you want to use that it's not as romantic even though the the vinyl experience can be more romantic and it can be more rewarding in a lot of ways um i think that we have to understand that it also comes with responsibility as we have learned from spider-man with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> Because when you have vinyl, you can't just be like, okay, I, I throw, I take it out and I throw it on the thing and it works. You know, yeah. you have to like, you have to take it out, you know, very delicately. I mean, if this is if you care, you know, you take out very, de or you just, you can do that. You can be that guy. It doesn't matter. It's just like. Plenty of people who claim they love vinyl, I'm, I'm sure have done that throughout their whole lives. And that's, that's why they like it because it sounds all shitty and. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, you know, Amp isn't really about saying things are the best, but you know, I personally, what has worked out the most successfully for me in archiving terms is CDs, just because I have had those times when I had my entire music library on my computer vanish, you know, undisclosed fruit named uh, <laughs> uh, computer company has told me we only replenish your entire music library once. And that's only the songs you buy from them. So if yeah. you have CDs, you have to go and you have to load up all your CDs again. But with vinyl, like you said, you can't stack them certain ways. You know, you have to put them in a very, you know, you know, not too humid, not too dry kind of environment. So like CDs, I've worked out best for me because, you know, it takes a long time to wear those things out and break them. And they, and they still, they have the same quality every time you play them. Yeah. And they're a physical thing that you can, you know, if you lose it on your computer, you can just load it up again. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but, you know, if you really care about your music, you can do that. They're definitely the best for preserving the actual music. But yes. there are some people that, like, they have... Part of the joy of collecting vinyl is, like, collecting, like, an artifact of the past. Like, this is how people used Definitely. to listen to yeah. music. But that's the way that CDs are going, too. It's like, yeah. if you're going to archive your CDs, you better make sure you also archive a CD player with that. You can't find one on almost any Apple computer now. I think it's just Apple 
thinks they're forward thinking. What you were saying with the optical drives though, is you can get an external and you can plug it in with USB. Yeah. You can do that. So it's still an option. So you can still do that on your computer. I'm just saying the CDs used to be like CD drives. Oh yeah. They, 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 they used to be standard. Yeah. Everywhere. Even in cars, even in cars, a lot of cars, I know I noticed some new cars are like, we don't have CD players. Like, I don't yeah. want to like go and look down at my iPhone and like drive and like, eh. <laughs> you know, I don't want to do that. I, 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 wanna, I don't want to be distracted. I want to like throw in a CD, start the car, drive and get where I need to go. I, I bet then like 15, 20 years, vinyl will, if it's still popular, then will be some of the only physical media that consumers can still get. Mm. Well, who, who knows? CD might make a, a comeback too, you know, maybe in like- <laughs> Yeah, who knows? 90s kids. Like 10 to 15 years, <laughs> like, you know, maybe there'll be like some 15 year old, whatever the future version of a hipster is, be like, hey, I found all my dad's like Nirvana CDs. Let's go listen to him on his old just like CD Chrome point. hipsters is like the future. <laughs> <laughs> just like it's like once it uh, if once it's gone for long enough, it'll start to be different. It, yeah, which, it'll be it'll be a novelty again. Yeah, so that like that's partly why vinyl is come back. I think because it was it was gone and then like someone found it and it was new again to them. So mm, maybe yeah. the same thing will happen to CDs. Yeah, and I think we haven't really made a case for digital archiving and digital like the digital formats. Great thing about digital. No maintenance, just it's there, it's in your file, it's in your computer. But the downside is that, you know, the 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 computer fairy can just float down and delete your files one day because your computer crashed or whatever, yeah. and then you're done unless you yeah. have backup. That's not actually my concern. Mine is, what's the longest you've ever had a hard drive last? Well, typically with a hard drive, I think mechanical drives still last a solid three years. I've been told you can make them run to five. Flash memory, I've heard that they can go about, they're getting to the point where they're about three years. Like they're getting closer. Thinking of of archiving, I think like you could reliably get a hard drive to, to last in the like center conditions, turning it on once a year to make sure that it still works, maybe 10 years. Yeah. And in that case, you're gonna have to then find something that is hopefully still compatible with that hard drive transferred all over and flash memory can just burn out and not give you any warning. And that's a lot like vinyl. Cause, yeah. And that's a lot like cassette tapes too. Cause you know, it's like, okay, we turn this on and we know the clock starts, yeah. you know, like we're, like we're running it out. You the know, limitation but... is still the physical. Yeah. Six million years from now, there's going to be some future archeologists, humans with six fingers or something that like excavate like old, like, like CDs and vinyl, and they're not going to be able to play it, and they're not going to know what it is. They might think it's something else completely. They're going to be like, dude, this looks like Chrome. <laughs> I think you should trust your ears first. Don't base your entire opinion off some article or people talking on an internet video. I think you should figure it out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think everyone, everyone should just listen to 8-track tape from now on. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Love you guys. Social media blast time. Like on Twitter. Subscribe on Facebook. Twitter on Instagram. Like on Instagram. Subscribe on Facebook. Like us on YouTube. Come subscribe to us on our channel. We don't have Tumblr or Vine.